Next on BYUSN, is it now primarily up to the BYU football players to turn this season around on Friday night? And we've got a one-on-one -on -one with Puka Nakua. How's this team doing right now with accountability? Not good, Jerem. But they're hoping to be better. Welcome to BYU Sports Station, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Tuesday, October 25th. I am Spencer Linton. He is BYU TV program coordinating producer, uh, Jerem Jordan. More heartland is what I say. Let's go. Today on the program, Kalani Sataki and Aaron Roderick's comments yesterday. What will BYU's final regular season record be? We'll discuss what we think. Hey. Yeah. Blaine Fowler on scheme versus execution. Uh, we're talking on the field, not Les Mis type. And the top five <laughs> women's soccer goals of the season so far. But first, some Tuesday headlines. BYU football working to snap a three-game losing streak when ECU visits Provo this Friday night. Maybe a night game at home is the key to rediscovering this winning mojo. Here's BYU offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick. Just getting our players back together. We have to have a tougher, more resilient mindset. And then we also have to have, to have more confidence in ourselves that you know, we can execute our plays and get back on track because it was just, you know, it wasn't that long ago that we were going up and down the field against an SEC team and scoring points. Does night game in Lavelle Edwards Stadium equal confidence? We'll see. Other notes from yesterday's media availability include head coach Kalani Satake speaking about his defensive coordinator, Elisa Tuiaki, specifically saying, quote, Elisa's working full time with the defensive line, end quote. Coach Roderick also added that running back Christopher Brooks has a hamstring issue and is questionable to play on Friday night against East Carolina. More great news, Spence. Yep. Women's soccer took home both West Coast Conference Player of the Week awards. Ellie Fire is the Offensive Player of the Week after three goals in two games last week. Shout out Maple Mountain High School. And Daviana Vaca is the Defensive Player of the Week, which is an interesting one. She was a sub, Spence, had an assist, played some good defense down the stretch against Gonzaga. A little surprised she got it, but she got it. That's hey, right. she got it. And Allie Fryer is on fire, right? Literally, she's on she's, fire. She's on fire right on now. On fryer. Come on. <laughs> BYU women's volleyball stays at number 17 in the latest AVCA coaches poll after losing in three sets, but to number four San Diego last Friday. The Cougars haven't been ranked lower than 17 still under Heather Olmstead as that string continues. Gonzaga Incredible. and Portland are in town this week. Yeah, they didn't drop. I was shocked they didn't at least drop a couple of spots. Still at number 17. There you go. Life's good when that's the worst ranking you've had. Amazing. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. What's Trending presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. Learn more at bodyguards.com. Fixing the BYU football issue, or issues, if you will. Mm -hmm. The million-dollar question is how? Is it game plan? Offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick says in the loss to Liberty, that was definitely not the case. This game was not about scheme. This game, I want to make that clear, this game had nothing to do with scheme. This play had to do with our mindset and our uh, ability to handle adversity. Plenty of adversity going on right now. Yeah. Uh, A-Rod added there is frustration because these are the same players that have had succeeded in tough situations before. It's disappointing because uh, this is the same group of players who have thrived in adversity in the past. I mean, this is it's not it's the same same guys. Now we've we've been in these tough situations before and played at our absolute best when the chips are down and and you know everything's against us. And um, for whatever reason, we we have not done that well enough uh, lately. And so we have to we got to fix that. Fair enough. It wears that mental strength that BYU used to win games at Washington State last year when it got weird and against USC. That's yeah, true. Head coach Kalani Satake says now he's running the show on the defensive side. He made that very clear, but that's not necessarily the key to success. At the end of the day, I'm coming up with the menu and deciding on the plays and deciding on the personnel. And when we do that, um, I'll call the plays on, on the game and, and um, you know, we, we just need to execute better. It's not about the, the plays or the calls. It's just about executing better. Jerem, at this point, is it ultimately up to the BYU football players, players, to turn this thing around on Friday night? No, it's both. It's coaches and players. It's, it's staff. It's everybody. Uh, they need to combine to turn this thing around. And what, 
What's, what's frustrating is there's not one simple answer for any of the issues that BYU has. There are many answers that need to occur to these questions. But the only uh, way to actually do it is BYU does it on Friday. Like, we're going to have to talk about it all week. Uh, we're going to spin in circles uh, our wheels on this. But ultimately, Friday, coaches have to coach better and players have to play better. And there's a lot of nuance to that. But it is both. I don't, I don't think and, – and, and both will say, you know, hey, uh, you know, we need to do our part. And, and they do. It's like, like we can't carry the show. Uh, the production can be amazing. If we stink on this program, the show stinks, right, regardless of how good the production is. We need to work together as a, our team, right? And so uh, there are great graphics, video, execution, directing, audio, all of it, right? It all comes together. We all have to uh, come together. In the same way, the football team has to do that as well. Like the nutrition, the nutritionist has to be great this week. Uh, they have to get enough sleep. They have to make ta- – like all of that <laughs> stuff matters yes. when you're playing a night game, when you're playing at home, when you're playing a, a very good offense in ECU and a and defense that – Got four takeaways last week against uh, UCF, who was 5-1, and one, and they blew them out. So it all needs to come together on Friday from players and coaches. Something has to happen mentally for the players, I think, specifically, to switch back into killer instinct mode because it's been long gone since the Oregon game. It's been gone. Something happened in that game, Spence. Um, something happened. Like, the dam broke. And a few players have said as much yeah. to me. Mm. And I don't like that. But something has been broken mentally for the BYU football players. That's not easily fixable. No, but I'm going to put that aspect specifically on the players to get right mentally. The coaches, sure, they have a huge responsibility to create a culture of belief and a winning environment and to get their guys in the right places, to coach them up, to help them, you know, do everything they can. But when it comes down to getting yourself individually and personally right, that's on the players. And something's been broken since Oregon. Now, the coaches believe that they've figured out some things that they need to do, but now it's about getting it to translate on the field. And that is very, very difficult. How, how do you help an individual player get to the right mental space? There are mental coaches for this as well. And, and so, BYU has them. Sure, So sure. perhaps those are the people this week who Absolutely. need to put in the money. Everybody needs Absolutely. to work. Absolutely. When I say nutrition, I mean everybody on the staff, Every including Every single person involved in this psychology. BYU football program, right down to the sports psychologist and the nutritionist, need to up their game. We have reached that point. It is DEFCON 2. Okay? Yeah. It's DEFCON 2. Mm -hmm. Now, for those who don't know the DEFCON scale, DEFCON 1 is the most severe. I'm at DEFCON 2 for this BYU football team. Yeah, DEFCON 1 is, uh, you know, 2017 stuff. Yes. Like nuclear warfare, if you will, like as far as the football season goes. you got to fire significant people. Yes. And, it's, and there's and, no turning back. And the way it's trending, it doesn't look like anything's going to happen in season with that. Like if you would have done it, if you were going to do it, you were going to do it probably after Liberty. Perhaps if things don't go well against CCU, that's a thing. But it feels like unless BYU really salvages the – the last third of the season here, which we'll break down more in a second, that there will be changes. And uh, that happens when you don't live up to standard. Now, the team doesn't create the standard, per se, unless they say it out loud. Like it, when Bronco Mendenhall says, Quest for Perfection, well, you've a created standard. a standard. This team didn't do that. What created the standard was uh, the amount of experience coming back, the fact that you go 10-3 and three and finish ranked, you return the quarterback, you return a lot, the offensive line, like, yeah, we were talking about 9-10 games for and this And BYU team. started 2-0, and Jerem. They right. were right on par with what we thought they were going to be. Ranked 12th, beat number 9 Baylor. Um, PFF said the O-line was one of the top five in the country. Those were all part of the expectation. So we, we felt the same way. Uh, it was easy not to uh, drink the Kool-Aid at that point. But unfortunately, this team, despite all of the experience, yes, they've been very injured, and yes, they've played a tough schedule, hasn't matched up uh, this year, and that's been disappointing. But the good news is... They can turn it around. I'm not sure it's going to happen, though, Spence. I'm in I-need-to-see-it mode, not, yeah. hey, I hope it happens. Yes, I, we all hope it happens. If you're watching the show, you hope it happens because um, you're probably a BYU fan. Um, if you're you, what are you doing watching this? But, hi, um, BYU has four games left. They're going to beat Utah Tech. Um, let's go, which brings us to topic two. Time to reassess. What will BYU's final regular season record be? Right now, four and four, four regular season games left. 
I still think seven and five. And here's why. I'd like that. Because there's something to getting into the right mental place and knowing that you play well under the lights at home at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. There is something to it. For this team, like it, they got to hang their hat on something. It's like, okay, we've been good at home. We win games under the lights at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. And I know that the issues don't go away because of the time of day. Right. But just maybe that gives players a mental edge. The thinking, okay, yeah, we, we can do this. We don't lose at this time of day in this place. We win games here. And so just, just maybe the belief is there. I know it's been weird against Utah State and Wyoming, but BYU found a way to win those games. ECU's better than both of those teams for sure. That's the concern. Those teams were so bad that it was BYU, okay. BYU took care of it. Yeah. So it wasn't I, by enough, and it also told us this team wasn't uh, in the right the sure. space we wanted them to be in. That was... Now that we have eight game spents, we know who BYU sure. is. Sure, I feel seven and five. I, I so I, three and four, three and one. Down beat the, Utah uh, Tech, back four. Beat ECU, and then figure out a way to do enough against either Boise State and or Stanford. Which one's tougher in your opinion? Boise State, right? I now. agree. The I game agree. at Boise State feels infinitely tougher than BYU's game against Stanford. They fixed some things after losing two of the first. They brought four, in a I former believe. NFL. Head coach. Former Boise State head coach. Dirk Cutter. Yeah, he coached them. To run the offense. That'd be bringing in Bronco to coach the defense. <laughs> like, that's the equivalent. That'd be so weird. Yes. That's not going to happen. So, and people are like, Spencer, you're crazy. What? Yeah, I, I, I'm not putting I all, agree. I'm not putting all my stock in the home game <laughs> and the fri- like the night thing. That, that's, I feel like it will help the players get to a better place uh, after what I'm sure is going to be a very, very intense and challenging week of practice mentally and physically. I hope so. Um, but, but I do, and we're going to talk about this later in the week. Rewind to 2014. I'm going to give you just a little nugget. Bronco Mendenhall give me took, a Cougar nugget. Bronco Mendenhall took over for Nick Howell in 2014 at the end of a four-game losing streak. Mm-hmm. Okay? Spurred on by the Taysom Hill injury, but Bronco Mendenhall yes. took over, yes. calling the place. And, and technically, it was after a three-game losing streak. BYU was 4-3 and three, mm-hmm. coming off a home loss to Nevada. And every BYU fan was like, what in the world? BYU just lost at home to Nevada? Well, that Nevada they team gave, ended up being like top 10. They gave up 40 Around that time? Yeah. That was Colin Kaepernick. No, no. Nevada it wasn't Colin Kaepernick. It wasn't? No. He was in the league. Colin Kaepernick was in the Super Bowl the year What before. was the other one then? F- was it 15? 42-35 where- in 2014 by a non-Colin Kaepernick-led, very mediocre Cody Nevada Fajardo. Team. There you go. Wait, what was the Kaepernick year then? Th- 2010. 10, yes. thank you. Okay. Yeah. 2014 against a very mediocre Nevada team at home. They give up Lost 42. Lost in Nevada in 2010. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Bronco Mendenhall is like, I'm taking over the defense. Yeah. Nick Cowell's going to do a position group. I'm taking over the defense. And then BYU fans are like, okay, yes, Bronco's back. BYU went on the road to Boise and gave up 55 points. <laughs> it was like, what do we do now? Because that, Bronco's calling the defense. Well, that Boise State team made it festival. They were very good. I know. Good. My point is, in week two, it got better when Bronco took over the defense. It helps when you play Middle Tennessee. And hopefully... Be- and UNLV and Savannah State and sure. at Cal, who didn't make a bowl game. Well, Stanford might, might, not, might not make a bowl game. Might be in a very similar situation yes. with an NFL You're quarterback. You're going to the Bay Area yeah, very on the similar. last week. Okay? So my point yeah. is, I feel like the defense will be better now that Kalani's had a little more time to adjust and If it's not, out. that's a real issue, and Spence. And it's a problem. Like, yeah. Yes, it should be better. So that's One- why 7-5, and five, because Kalani's taken over the defense, and I feel like with time, it will get better. I go six and six. Uh, one win is Utah Tech, obviously, and then I hope Friday it's ECU. I'm not sure about at Boise State and at Stanford. I can't confidently say right now the, BYU, the way BYU is playing that they go and win those games because this BYU team has got to discover something that's not there. And you're grasping at straws, so grab whatever you can get. <laughs> night game! Be- because night game, <laughs> yes. Like, it's obviously not causation. It's correlation. But it feels like it's becoming causation that BYU at night turns into this vampire cougar hybrid, <laughs> and it's really good. Like, what is the? Re- I can't even remember the record at home. Twenty-two and one, kickoff after six local time. Last three years, twenty twenty. Yeah, they, um, win, they win games at night. It's weird how good BYU is at night like that, and how bad they, how mediocre I guess BYU. BYU is about a five hundred team, right? It's also Halloween weekend of sorts with so the there vampire Coogan play. So there we go. BYU actually played Western Kentucky in 2020 on That's Halloween. Right. That's right. I remember saying bye to the kids. Hey, got some candy. Good job. See you. Daddy's got to go watch this football game and watch uh, 
let's big red lose a dance off to Cosmo. I I think six and six. Oh gosh, I hope for four and zero oh somehow. You know, three and one, like you're saying. We all hope but, for but four I and feel, oh. Right. I feel like two and two is uh, a safe guess. Sure. Now I feel the, like three and one is asking a lot. It is. And I'm that's one and three is like a real possibility here. But I'm I'm asking a lot of Kalani Satake. Like I'm you're putting asking a lot, lot of, of everybody. Putting a lot of trust in his ability to get the culture right and the belief right and call the plays. The ECU offense is coming in on fire. Like I'm I okay, two weeks in a row, they've had a 300, 100, 100 with a, a passer, rusher, and receiver. They're legit. Like, like I dug into them Sunday, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Can BYU, BYU win a shootout? Trouble. No. I would say no right now because I don't trust the defense. And then offensively, you just said Chris Brooks has a hamstring injury. So it's Slopini Katoa and maybe Miles Davis? Maybe. BYU doesn't have a run game. This is very concerning. Like, what's the best thing Puka for Nakua it? Puka is the running back. <laughs> We're at the point where on third and ten at midfield, Puka Nakua got a handoff. Like, I love Puka. We're going we're gonna to hear your conversation uh, with him from yesterday. I'm excited to listen to it. I haven't heard it. He, and we'll, we'll talk about his impact on the offense. He's awesome. He's one dude. Like, Jaron Hall is still hurt with the shoulder. The, Jaron Hall's best friend is two things that aren't happening right now. One is a run game, and two is some defensive stops. I'm not talking about an occasional takeaway, which Talon Alfrey's pick was great. He scored a touchdown two plays later. It's uh, staying off the field for the defense. These guys are tired because the offense isn't doing enough on the field at times. Um, in the shootout, it's like, hey, defense, get a stop. Offense keeps scoring. Tackle K.J. Jefferson on that crazy Eli Manning Super Bowl play. Yeah, there's a few things that need to happen. So hopefully, you know, BYU needs to make a bowl game, and the next year we go back to the standard of make a bowl game in year one in the Big 12 and, and proceed from there. But Friday is a massive game. BYU loses that. Oh, my gosh, you have to win on the blue or on the farm. Yeah, to get, a, to to get, get to, to a bowl, bowl game. game. Like, BYU playing Stanford the final week of the season when both teams are 5-6 and six and the winner goes to a bowl game would, Thanksgiving be, a, weekend. would be a real scenario if BYU does not win this game on Friday. Turkey sleepy yeah. Saturday. I mean, it's weird. I don't want weird, that to come down to that. Weird deal. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, now that you've had that uh, joyous conversation to, you know, think this about. Whole, this whole week's going to be fun that way. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> It's uh, now for you, time for you rather to answer Voice of the Nation. Our question of the day is this. What will BYU football's final regular season record be? Troy Beagley on Instagram says 8-4. and four. Okay, let's Ooh. go. Let's go. Every game left is a winnable <laughs> game. It really it is. It is, yeah. With the yeah. changes I know Kalani is making, I think we will see a better and much improved BYU football team this Friday. I'm hoping. Mm. I'm hoping there's a, there's a thing to the Friday night. Lavelle Edwards Stadium, I night think, game, I Coog think, Vampire. Coog Vampires, let's go. I think ECU more skilled than Liberty, by the way. I think Liberty hasn't played as tough of a schedule. ECU has uh, lost by one to NC State, lost by three to Navy in double ECU's OT. ECU's a good football team. ECU's good, man. I respect the heck out of the Pirates right now. Okay, BYU football's Kalani's Taki airs tonight as the coach, Gregor Bell, Puka Nakua, the guest, Isaac Rex in the film room, Deep Blue on Derwin Gray. What he's been up to since BYU would go to his church in North Carolina. Pretty awesome. Tonight, 8.30 Eastern on the BYU TV app. Now, speaking of Puka Nakua, up next, my conversation with him and why love can hurt sometimes and how he's holding his teammates accountable. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. Accidents don't just happen nine to five. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24 seven. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always and get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24 seven. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com.
Let's kick off AFR on BYU TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And, and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked him down pretty quickly. Sometimes love can hurt. We know Puka Nakua's got plenty of love and energy. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play -play. alongside Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. And yesterday, speaking of Mr. Nakua, I had the chance to speak with him one-on-one -on, -one on how to fix this BYU football losing trend. It's complicated, but he's ready for the challenge as one of the team leaders one-on-one -on -one with Puka Nakua. Puka, we have heard from several people that you gave an impassioned speech following BYU's loss in Lynchburg at Liberty, and it woke the locker room up. If you can, take us inside that meeting and the feelings that you had in that moment and, and your message to your team. Um, <laughs> feelings of, of my, the most intense love I have. I, I, my brothers have felt that love for me. It's a, f a feeling of... An, I, I feel the pain. Uh, nobody ever wants to lose, but um, I also feel the, the pain and love of accountability, I guess, in the sense of everybody from, our, from the, uh, the top of our staff all the way down to the guys making sure that our, our ankles are taped right. Um, everybody needed to, uh, to look in the mirror and make sure that uh, what you were doing is what you were supposed to do. We, we're given out there as a football team. We go out there with 11 guys on offense and defense, and each guy has their own task. And um, there's nothing more we can ask of you to, other than to do your one the, to do your 111th. Mm -hmm. this, in the football terms, that's how it comes down, is to do your 111th. So you're asked to do your one assignment, and that's all we can cut. You do more, and it's a huge blessing. We, there's nothing more exciting than seeing you get your job done and then make the play or something like that. But to make sure that you look in the mirror and – you got to be accountable for what you put on tape. The eye in the sky never lies. That's that's always something that my brothers have told me, and it's something that you learn um, pretty quickly as you get in here to college. Is, and the amount of film that other teams watch, and the amount of film that you have to watch is, um, you think somebody might not see it, but the eye in the sky always gets it. So you always you got to be accountable for what you put on tape, and just a, a simple reality check of. I, I, I needed to hold everybody accountable and guys hold me accountable. There are plays out there I miss. I think of the, the post ball that I missed from Jaron. I had a screen uh, on third and 10 where I, I had the opportunity to get a first down and I didn't get it. We had to punt the ball away. So accountability in all aspects of making sure that it's not only football stuff, but when it comes through the week, uh, everything everything plays a part. We traveled early last week. Uh, not <laughs> travel, but making sure you take care of your body before we get there on Saturday. And all the little things add up of accountability, not just when... Uh, coaches up there on the whiteboard or giving you a plus or a minus on on the play that you're in. Um, we're, we're making sure we get to the lift on time. You're taking care of your body, the extra treatment, all the little things that it adds up. We're we're in the later part of the season, and um, you got to be accountable for what you do. Uh, it's hard as I was talking to one of the freshmen, and they're young kids, and you just come out of high school and you're you're an elite uh, player on your team, and then you step onto a team full of elite guys, and it can kind of fluster you a little bit, but. The, the consistency and your accountability to yourself is uh, will allow you to succeed because uh, you do the things that you know you're capable of doing consistently. Uh, when things get hard and other people might be tired, the habit that you've built is is what's going to get us strong. So making sure that everybody's everybody's habits and the things that they're they're doing out there on the football field are being checked, and that you're aware of the good things that you're doing and the bad things that you're doing because uh, we're doing a lot of good things, but there are some bad things that we got to change. So. Clearly, accountability is uh, is a big part of how you want to show love and and how you want to hold guys to a higher standard. So, how do you walk that fine line of not being too intense and making guys feel down, but you know, still calling them out adequately and and doing so with love? Because uh, I know that's a that's a tricky balance. So, how do you do that? Um, yeah, just like you said, it is a tricky balance. And luckily, uh, growing up with brothers, I feel like I made it either. I, uh, made it easier. I've been playing football a long time, and obviously the situation changed and the environment changed. But um, 
my the the love is my love is greater than uh my love for my teammates is greater than any other thing that um could happen out there I, there's nothing more than i uh, on third down when i want i want to see um max Tooley, keenan peely like all, all, all 11 guys end up on the running back and we have a tfl and then our punt unit goes out there but uh it might not always love love has many different ways of showing how it comes out and it may be intense i i, I want to get up close into your face and that whenever some somebody mentions that especially here at, uh, at byu when our culture is love and learn i always think of the <laughs> it's funny it the 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 talk by Thomas or uh, Jeff, uh, somebody, where he's like, I'm going to get up close in your face. I want you to feel the heatness of my breath and something like that. And that's that intensity. It's it's my most intense love for you because I want you to succeed. I know everybody in there in that locker room is capable of. So my love is from the the best place it could come without me trying to punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like how that said yeah uh that, and it's a unique type of love for sure not everybody likes to have that type of tough love but sometimes that's what has to happen for for a team to progress now i've had a couple of your teammates talk to me about how BYU kind of lost their swagger and mojo after the oregon game and, and it was kind of like confidence was broken and maybe BYU hasn't been the same team since that uh performance against the ducks how do you rectify that? How do you get back to a place where you are confident again? Um, I think kind of some of the stuff that I mentioned before, consistency, that's where it comes from. Of um, That's something that we haven't been able to put together of consistently scoring on offense, consistently passing the ball well, consistently blocking well, um, consistently running the ball well. And obviously the other side of the ball has had their own struggles, but making sure that we are consistent because that's that's how you ha you earn the you earn the right to be confident through your consistency of on Monday I I did this and this I on Tuesday I watched this film and made sure that I was prepared for this look so when that opportunity arises on Saturday you never know we go over so many various looks and uh, we see all the tape and we see what they put out and they obviously watch us but you never know what you're gonna get out there on Saturday until you get out there so the consistency of work that you put in through the week and um, it doesn't really it started early it started before september 3rd was our first game and it's crazy we're, we're we're a ways away from that now and the consistency that you did um in your winter workouts through your summer workouts these are the, those are the times that when when we're here now we're in the grind we just lost three games of um what were the habits uh what were the habits that you've been able to hold throughout the season to carry you into these these tough moments where i can feel confident um because i know i've put in the work what is BYU playing for at this point on the heels of a three-game losing streak with a pretty good ECU team coming to Provo on Friday? Uh, we're play we're playing for Friday, just 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 as you said it. Uh, it's it, uh, so trying to be so laser focused into what we got. We only get so many games. We get uh, at the beginning of the season, we we get twelve games, and you look at those, and they're sad. The Saturdays, the Fridays that we get to play, uh, you you only get so many of them. So you got to take advantage of every opportunity. And we're locked in on ECU right now. Uh, another t uh, another team getting a chance to come down here to Provo. So um, we're gonna have to earn the respect, and we're gonna have to continue to do the things that we've been doing right, and then continue to minimize our mistakes. You are a guy that has a natural leader inside of you, a fire. How do you stoke that fire in some other guys that maybe are not inclined to be that way? Because it just feels like the locker room needs not just you, but multiple leaders. So how do you lead that front and stoke the fire? Um, I wish I knew what stoke the fire meant. <laughs> <laughs> Light it but, up. Uh, Throw the yeah. match in there. <laughs> All right. Then I guess I got to be carrying the gasoline and just continue to make sure that my fire is burning. I love this game and I love every single one of those guys. I love our entire staff. Um, I'm grateful to be in this position that I am right now playing football. I, I'm, I'm healthy. I'm in one piece. Uh, I have the opportunity to come play in front of 60,000 fans on Friday night here in the Valdez Stadium and in Provo, Utah, in the place that I've grown up. So, um, my fire is always burning and hopefully when guys see the fire, they can, they can follow the, it does. You don't have to, you don't have to always have your own fire. You can follow the fire. The, we, we are the light that there are captains on this team. There are people that have been put in the, the positions that they're in to lead, to lead this, uh, the football team. And I believe in coach Kalani, I believe in Jaron Hall. We have the right guys to get the job done. So you just got to follow the light for sure. Is it as simple as winning a game to reestablish the confidence and mojo? Does it cut? Is it, is it that simple? 
<laughs> I believe so. It's the best feeling when you walk in uh, into the locker room, uh, whether you're in a way or home, and Coach Kalani's kind of trying to hit his gritty. Everybody's dancing and circling up, so and everybody has a smile on their face. That's that's love and learning at its best, and uh, we need to get back to that. And that's our plan on Friday. How much do you know about ECU at this point, and what they're going to try and do to slow the BYU offense down? Um. I wish I, I wish I could tell you all, all I know is that uh, we're planning on doing a lot of things on the BYU offense to continue to ramp it up. So there, there is no chance of slowing us down. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Can you give us a hint of anything, Puka? I, I mean, <laughs> is this been BYU's throwing it over the top ten times? Uh, I, I wish I know. I got I got maybe five, five or six. We got uh, Jaron, Chris, Peeny, Miles, uh, Chase, Cody, Kibo, Koss. Uh, Isaac Mason, Ethan Erickson. Uh, we got we got a bunch of dudes up there on the offense, and everybody's excited and ready to make plays. And you'll see you'll see a lot of those guys out there on Friday. That's for sure. Well, I will say this: the wide receiver room, even amidst the three game losing streak and frustrations and struggles, the wide receiver room has been very very consistent, and a lot of different guys have stepped up. What's been the key to the BYU wide receivers performing at such a consistent high level, regardless of opponent? Um, I think there's a, there's a confidence in our room that I think, uh, coach, coach fest brings that to our room. And then obviously, um, with Jared, uh, the trust that he has in us. And then just, uh, each guy, we go out there, we play against our defense and we practice hard. We, we wanted to be the, the worst possible situation during practice. So when we get out there in the game, uh, second and a second and 13 doesn't seem too bad when we're practicing on second and 13 and there may be 13 guys out there on defense so we're we're back we're practicing a backed up um situation of we're 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 behind the sticks on first and second down and we're we know we're looking at a third and long so um all those guys there's they're extremely uh happy to make those plays there, there's never a time where we look at the sticks and it's all third and 30 where oh dang we can't make a play uh, every time we step out there especially if we're going to drop back and uh jaren's going to pass that rock every single one of those guys and i know in our receiver room are ready to make that play whether it's in a bubble game a jet sweep uh, a run block or uh, we're throwing 50 yard bombs over the top of the defense uh, we're ready for all of it Puka, we'll finish with this. And I kind of feel strange asking this because it comes after such a frustrating ordeal in Lynchburg. But in any way, was what you experienced over the weekend with your team a good thing and beneficial? If so, how? Um, I wouldn't say... No, I, I wouldn't say it's beneficial. Obviously, uh, our, our objective to go out there every week is to win the game, and that was that's we failed. We failed with our objective. Um, so, I wouldn't say there there was a good that came out of it. We're gonna get better, but there uh, there was no good part of this weekend. Uh, we we our plan is to win football games, and we didn't do that. Yeah, fair to say the pain is driving you to be better. Agreed. <laughs> All right, Puka, we appreciate the time, my friend. Uh, let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma. You can share it with your buddies. Send it through the locker room. Yes, Under sir. the lights of the Edward Stadium, it's been a special thing for you guys to play at night, so uh, we're looking forward to that. Yes, sir, always, and go Cougs, baby. Go Cougs indeed. Puka Nakua on BYU Sports Nation. He's been special when he's been on the field. That's right. Let's take a look at some of uh, what he's done. So 36 touches this year, Spence. 25 in the last two games now that he's been healthier. 12.1 yards per touch. Woo. Six touchdowns total. That's once every six touches. And uh, four of those touchdowns have come in the last two games. So more Puka equals more touchdowns. Obviously, he's taken a vocal role standing up in the locker room and talking to the team as we learned in your post game interviews on Saturday um, on BYSN game day post game and uh, the fact that he is uh, on the show today from an interview yesterday he's on the coach show tonight he wants to be out in front and talk and he wants to be out in front on the offense and more puka equals more goodness more touchdowns for BYU so just find him but he's not the only weapon he named him there are a lot of guys to find but with no run game can BYU do it is BYU just going to be in third and seven plus a lot of times. Or is Puka Nakua again flexed back as the running back? We've seen this the past two that, weeks. That is a sign of desperation in the run game. Uh, I, and you want to get Puka the ball, I get that part. It is just concerning that BYU is injured and or inept to the point where you're bringing Puka in the backfield. <sighs> Woo. Well, I heard him outside the locker room in Lynchburg. I can tell you it was spirited. You could, you could hear him? It was spirited. Yeah. That's for sure.
Uh, did he say heck? Or <laughs> Tomorrow night, the men's basketball blue and white scrimmage is live 9 Eastern time on the BYU TV app. As we get closer to the season, less than two weeks away. Plus, up next, is Zach Wilson in danger of losing the Jets' win streak this weekend? We'll discuss it. We've got some guys going down around him. It's, it's not good, the injury front for the Jets. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store. Official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Wrapping up in a minky couture luxurious blanket. Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. Welcome to a partnership where customer experience comes first. It's our focus. It's your expectation. We provide support to those that go the extra mile for all of us. Supplying products, training, and service for generations. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. Before I was a coach at BYU or before I was even a player, I was a BYU fan. We've got great energy as a team, but we have even better energy because of our fans, and it's absolutely magical. When you hear the crowd roar, that makes it more exciting, more of an adrenaline rush. The roar of the crowd, you can feel it on the floor, you can feel that energy, and it's unlike anywhere else in the country. BYU Sports, it's all about the fans. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Make sure you follow the show on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok. I am Spencer, he is Jerem. Time to whip it. Cougar Whip Round presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Spender, the BYU Jets lose their starting running back, Brees Hall, and tackle Elijah Vera Tucker. Oh, I hate it. They won four in a row, Zach Wilson at the helm. Is that streak about to end? Unless Zach Wilson can pass the ball, because they're going to have to rely on his arm a lot more with their top running back option and their best offensive lineman both out. It stinks, but I feel like Zach's going to have to do more. If he doesn't, then yes, it's probably going to end at the hands of Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. They've taken the ball out of his hands quite a bit to uh, just make it, make sure he doesn't have all the, sure. uh, the load. They did trade for James Robinson from, from the Jacks. Jacksonville. Yep. Um, they are hosting the Patriots. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens. But yeah, I, I don't think that streak's going to keep going. Five and two is pretty good. And Brees Hall was rookie of the year candidate. Yeah, for sure. A and uh, RG3 said on Monday night, MVP type candidate for the Spe way the special Jets are play. Playing. I like Michael Carter too, a guy out of North Carolina. Yes. Really good running back, but he's not Brees Hall. He's not Brees Hall. No, Brees in the passing game for Zach on little dump offs was getting tons of yards. Get very tough. Moore is going to fall on Zach Wilson's right shoulder. And it, and Elijah Moore is going to play this week, sounds like. Well, let's, let's hope they can rectify that relationship. <laughs> BYU women's volleyball stays at number 17. What? In spite of being swept by fourth rank San Diego, last Friday. Are you surprised they stayed at number 17? No, I'm not surprised. I'm shocked. <laughs> when you lose, you go down, typically. Uh, San Diego up to number three, by the way. They're amazing. Watch that match. Oh, my gosh. Uh, BYU had some chances in it, though. Didn't make a couple of plays. Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked that BYU didn't go below it. The streak continues under Heather Olmstead. They've never been lower than 17. Crazy. Yeah, we, Crazy. We, we went as far as saying on the show last week, yeah, they're probably going to fall below 17 after they lose to San Diego. And it didn't happen. Nope, the voters didn't it care. It didn't happen. It's wow. Like, no, BYU's still good. San and Diego's just elite. And that's a coach's poll we care about, by the way. The ABC. It's a coach's <laughs> poll. There's a media poll for men's, but well, not they women's actually, volleyball. They, the coaches actually care about that poll because it is the poll in volleyball. Yep. There's a little more invested in there, right? Yep. Stanford recently offered a promotion where you could test drive seats as a potential season ticket holder to the point of giving away tickets. 
for the final two home games against Washington State and BYU. <laughs> Very popular to the point where the ticket link was taken down, reposted this morning with an automatic renewal charging you uh -huh. for next season uh -huh. ahead of time. Which Cougar fan base took the most advantage to get free tickets to the Sanford game? Oh, it's got to be the BYU fan base for sure. You'd think. Given the alumni base of BYU fans in the Bay Area, for sure, BYU fans, I'm sure we're like, uh, free tickets? Yeah, I'll be there. Uh, Thankfully, Stanford's a smart institution. They figured it out. We're like, oh, yeah, by the way, like, you could test right. But you this locks you in for the next season. They finally fixed it, yeah. Uh, I've been to a game there against Cal a couple years ago. Nicknamed the library for a reason. Very cool. <laughs> Andrew Luck and Christian McCaffrey uh, oh, aren't walking through that door. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It, my gosh. I mean, you think about a program that's won so many Rose Bowls and it's had so much it's tradition. It's been a minute. Yeah. It's been a minute wild. Okay, if you missed Coordinator's Corner or Trevor Maddich on the show yesterday or any programs on BYU TV for sports, go to BYUSN.com. Get all your content on demand. Up next, dual threat analyst Uncle B, Blaine Fowler, joins us to discuss yeah. if BYU can indeed turn things around and in a short week, no less. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From car accidents to business law, from divorce to estate planning, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. with Kalani Satake and Greg Rubel. When I was younger, I was a better dancer. Don't show any more dancing or anything. Okay, good. <laughs> I think we've developed some really good habits the last couple weeks and, and looking to step it up again. A lot of great things can happen when they care. Not bad. That's good stuff. Hey. Yeah. yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> BYU Sports Station is live in Studio B. We have moved over to the comfortable chairs because Which is? it's the Cougar Council the Room. The Cougar Council Room. As, and as and dubbed by yours PM, truly. The Cougar Vampire <laughs> Council Room because the Cougs turn into vampires at night, apparently. 23 and 1. Well, we welcome in Blaine Fowler to counsel with us and discuss how in the world BYU football turns this thing around. Hold on. He took he he took umbrage with me not mentioning Dallas Lloyd, your son-in-law. Oh, okay. But he's like, way. no Christian McCaffrey, Stanford. no Andrew Luck. Why does he only talk about offensive guys? <laughs> Their defense was lights out when they it's were true. kicking Iowa. Toby Gearhart. How about Dallas Lloyd, the captain of the defense? How about that guy? Yeah. In your in <laughs> your good father-in-law. <laughs> You're a good father-in-law. Yeah. yeah. So no. Maybe they, Dallas can help BYU figure things out though, defensively. You, you mentioned something, and, and when BYU goes to play over there, when that year. They were top five team. They were dominating, right, with Christian on the O and, mm -hmm. and, and, and that whole group. Um, we'd go over to some games. Whenever I had a bye week, we would go over. And we'd go out and we'd be walking through the tailgate. And it'd be like, whoa, the students showed up today. Like, this is going to be big. Tons of students out here in the tailgate. We'd go in the game. They never came in. <laughs> They He's stayed still, out and tailgated until they had enough, went back to the library. They're like, we got a paper <laughs> to write. We got a like, uh, research Why program. are none of those people in the stadium? It was the weirdest thing. And this was a top five football team. Wild. I could never understand that over there. And that's when they were great. You know, so. Yeah. 
Now, yeah. it's, now it's a winnable game. Yes. But back to your point, Spence. What, How in the what world? Are you, what are you yeah. seeing? And obviously tonight you're going to break it down more on AFR. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it more. Um, my evaluation of the defense from this past week is way different than the week before. Well, than the three or four weeks before. Where, where as I, and as you guys know, I look at every single play in the whole game. I watch the coach film. And, and, um, and previous weeks I'm like, where, where are these guys going? Like, why are three guys in the B gap? And why is this guy running opposite here when it's a downhill power or this way? Like, all kinds of questions about scheme and what's going on with the scheme and why are these guys so confused? And as we've learned, they were doing a game plan type of a defensive mentality where, hey, we're going to change the defense every week. We've lost a bunch of guys to injuries. Our answer to that is we're going to scheme different. We're going to out-scheme these teams. But they were so confused. So Kalani finally this last week said, enough of that. We're going simple. We're going back to basics. We're going to have, we're going to have an identity. We're going to play a lot of man. We're going to play two deep zone and some three deep zone. It's going to be easy for these guys. Now, remember, you got to put that in on a Monday because you don't practice on a, on a Sunday. And they came out. Now I'm watching film this week, and I'm going, guys are, like, there's not three guys running over there. Guys are where they're supposed to be. They have the right leverage. Now I, I'm finding myself going, Come on, I'm not going to say names, but go. Like, what are you doing? You're right there. That's your gap. Here comes the running back. Go meet him in the, in the hole. Like, what are you doing? Like, you're the spill guy. You're right where you're supposed to be. The, the running back bounce. Go get him. It's almost like they're unsure. You're referring to linebackers. Like, backers and, and D linemen. Like, okay, okay. you're double teamed. Your job is to hold the line of scrimmage right there. Like, get low. Get down on your – like, just stay right there. Your job's not to make – you're where you're supposed to be. You're in the right gap. Now just make the play you're supposed to make. Which to me is a little more encouraging because when guys aren't where they're supposed to be, there's no way you're making the play. When guys are where they're supposed to be, if guys will step up and make the play, and, and Spencer, to your comment, I think first week doing something different. So really it was the same problem they've had all along. Same problem but a little different. Same problem in that it was a different defense again yes, yeah. for another week. But now that's not going to change. No continuity week two, this week two week. I expect right. Kalani's like defense week, to be better. Week, week two... Short week by a day. Now, now when you're in that spot, be confident. You mentioned confidence. Be confident. Go ahead. Play downhill. You know you're supposed to be in C-gap. You were there last week, didn't play downhill. Play downhill and go meet that guy in the hole. Safety. You're supposed to run a banana route, like this kind of a banana, outside in and be the alley runner. The leverage is to put that guy right to you. Don't run a banana route this way. You're running an opposite banana, and you're running into the back of the line. No back. more opposite bananas. Like, like run, like maintain run, outside leverage. Be confident. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're in the right spot now. Now play fast with confidence, and you know Below in our post game talked a lot about when when Bronco kind of took the defense over and they simplified it when Jaime was having all those troubles, and people forget that first week. And I think you guys may have mentioned it. They got blasted the first week. And you were talking 2014. 2014 you were talking against Boise State, right? Yeah. yeah. Then, then they went on a run of playing great D, because it, it took them a week. Or there was a week yeah. to adjust, and then so I'm really anxious to see if they can be in the right place again this week. But now, go get it. Go execute. Play fast. Play with confidence. And they, BYU has injuries like no other team in the country. Like, so if you're going to be going through a bunch of we dudes... We feel they're unique that way? We don't feel like other teams nope. may have a I, I, And I cannot put my finger on it. I've talked to a lot of my friends that are, that are orthopedic surgeons. Like, what is going on? Is this the mission? Like, what is it? Because I think BYU has more than their fair share of injuries. And I, mm. I don't know if we need to commission a study to figure it out. We've been playing a bunch of games recently without two of their top three inside defensive tackles, without... With two to three linebackers either nicked up or not playing at all, probably be the same again this Malik week. Mora. Without your starting free safety, that makes all the calls. Um, you know, it, it's on the offensive side. They've only had one of their three backs healthy for the last two weeks, and it's been a different guy. Running backs. You know? and, yeah. and how many times have you had Gunner and Puka 100% healthy on a game day? 100% healthy on a game day. Zero. Zero, zero like, games. Zero games. And, and I don't think that that happens to other teams. But if that is happening. The adjustment you have to make as a staff is you got a bunch of new guys coming in, keep it simple. Let the guys be confident and execute at a high speed. I think that's the mentality. We're going to see against East Carolina if this defense can play better, and then if the offense can do their share. Offense had an equal role in the terribleness last week. Agreed. If, if, if your defense is struggling, you can't have one-minute drives, and they had a bunch of them. Like, even if you punt... Can you go out and get two first downs and, and hold the ball for four or five minutes? Because what's happened the last two weeks is they go out 
and they have a one minute and four second drive, and then they have a one minute and 43 second drive, and then they throw a pick on one play and have a seven second drive. And the defense, they gave up a, say they gave up a 10 play, six minute drive. That's going to happen in a game. East Carolina is going to have a 10 yeah. play. That's college football. But then the offense needs to come out and play complementary football. You hear coaches talk about complementary football. That means that, okay, even if we don't go down and score this time, we need to possess the ball a little bit because that defense needs to regroup over there. You can't have an 11 play drive for five minutes, go over to the sideline, have the offense throw a pick on the first play or go three and out in 56 seconds and then go back out on the field. Because guess what? They're going to have another nine play. And now you're on your heels and you're never going to recover. So complimentary football, I'm looking for that this week. I'm looking for the offense to take a little more time. Don't play fast if you're not going to score. Please don't play fast if you're not going to score. And we've got just a second here, but ECU is uh, an intimidating offense. They've got some real players, a real offense. This is going to be a big challenge, even if BYU is better. Yeah, and it might not be good enough, even if. Their quarterback is more veteran than Bennett last week. Old Nayers. So, mm -hmm. so very similar skill set. Um, they're, re they're really skilled on offense. Now, I would say, as I look at them, I don't think defensively they're quite as good as Liberty. Liberty's really solid defensively. Man, they just don't get out of position, and they're good. So so then I'm like, oh, okay, offense. <laughs> this is another really good offense that needs to be respected. Offense needs to really step up this week. Defense needs to be sound and get, hey, get two stops a half for Pete's sakes. Get four stops. Offense, That's all right. o only be stopped twice. <laughs> Please. And go win. Yeah. Mm. And go win. And only so twice? I, I, I put this Oof. a lot on the offense, but but I feel like they're going to be a little more healthy on the offense this week than on the defense. Um, I think that East Carolina, they you can move the ball on them. So go score a bunch of points, outscore these guys, let the defense start to settle into this more simple defensive scheme, and we'll see what happens. Fantastic yeah, go stuff. Get that, Thanks, Blaine. Go get that pirate booty. Okay, uh, more AFR tonight as Blaine and David and Dave break it down. The X and O's. That was just a taste. If you like that uh, Caesar salad, you're going to love the steak tonight, 7 Eastern on the BYU TV. Hey, I've got a main course for you coming up, Jerem. How about Top 5 Tuesday presents the Top 5 Soccer Goals from BYU Women's Soccer. Ooh. There have been some absolute gems. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Let's kick off AFR on BYU TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And, and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked him down pretty quickly. My name's Wilbur. You know what happens to pigs around here? They're saving him for Christmas. It isn't fair. I want to live. You will. Spider, that thing is creepy. Look at her. I'm making you a promise right now. I am not going to let them kill you. So I need special words and lots of them. Would you make that? It's made. Clever little spider, isn't she? You made me your friend. And in doing so, you made a spider beautiful to everyone. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. This program is on demand. Download the free BYU TV and BYU radio app and subscribe, rate, and review. It's time for Top 5 Tuesday following a big win by BYU Women's Soccer. Just that wonderful, rainy, 
scenario it was great. Saturday night against Gonzaga. We're looking to be gone. We're looking back at the top five goals of the season. Start us off, Jerem. Number five, the Cougars hosted Portland, who were undefeated, had given up three goals all year. Jamie Shepard slots this one from outside the 18. Boom goes to Dynamite, and BYU beat previously unbeaten Portland 4-1 to one two and a half weeks ago. At number four, enter Brecken Mazingo. The goal against Utah Valley from, not surprisingly, outside the box. She does this a lot. Five minutes in, Mazingo taking a pass from Olivia Smith. Loses her defender, then sends the ball into that wonderful netting in the top left corner. BYU's first goal of that match. Number three, super sub Allie Fryer got the game winner Saturday against Gonzaga with an excellent dummy from Bella Felino for Fryer's third goal of the week. She's got six goals this season, and that won the game against Gonzaga. All right, who sent that cross in? It was Mazingo. She's awesome. Number two, Bella Felino. Using her noggin at a high level against Gonzaga. Following the scoreless first half, Mazingo again. Corner kick into the box. Felino heads the ball into the bottom right corner. First goal of the game. BYU to win 2-1. to one. And uh, now they're cream of the crop in the West Coast Conference, it seems, Jerem. Santa Clara 6-0 and at number one. Big game Saturday. And the number one play and goal from women's soccer this year so far. Olivia Wade in the 89th minute to beat Utah. This oh. is 50 seconds later. Incredible. After Utah just equalized the game and BYU thought maybe this is going to be a tie. Nope. Olivia Wade, sister Wade, Houston mission. Jeremy Guthrie, the president, in for the goal. You know who's displayed mental strength after some adversity and struggles this year? BYU women's soccer. Yeah, lots of strength. Let's go. Yeah. Let's share some of that with BYU football. Our share, question share of the day. Already. What will BYU football's final regular season record be? I'm saying seven and five. Jerem's leaning towards six and six. Yeah. Whew. Hopefully our, better. Our lead voice of the day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated from Thefty Can on Instagram answers, if this BYU team turns things around against East Carolina, seven and five. If we don't see any adjustments, then BYU will go five and seven with a nail biter win against perennial no, powerhouse Utah that's Tech. Not the How elite is this the elite voice, voice of the day? That's not the elite voice. That's garbage. <laughs> Get that's, it out of that's here. That's terrible. Today's rise and shine. the goalie's wickets. Presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU. I'm just ticked <laughs> off. It's uh, all blue seats in the Merritt Center now. At BYU tickets tweeting, hey, the tan seats are gone. Tan is dead. Tan is dead. Tan, tan is officially tan. out. Ugh. Yeah, no, bring it on all great. of the blue seats. It looks fantastic. Well done to everyone involved there. Our thanks to today's guest, Blaine Fowler. Sorry to Dennis Pitta, ran out of time. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. This and all of our shows are on demand on BYUSN.com. For Jeremy, I'm Spencer. Shout out to Roger French. Stay tuned. For more after further review tonight, 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app, followed by BYU football's Kalani Satake. Go Cougs. That wasn't an elite tweet. Come on, man.